What if the watcher falls forward and takes out your whole little display? <laughs> what if you pre-ordered all your Marvel Legends? at Dorkside Toys. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Overview. Today, we're gonna take a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends What If Wave, and, okay, there's the whole wave. Seems to be a trend lately of me having to pull the camera back in order to get everything in frame. It's either big boxes or a lot of figures. Okay, getting it out of the way right off the bat. When this wave was announced, I was not as excited about it as other Marvel Legends waves, you know? This is just designs we knew nothing about from stories that we hadn't seen yet. But I'll fully admit, I'm into the show. There's some, well, at least personally, I feel like there are some better episodes. There's not so better episodes, but I, I'm enjoying the ride. So after getting some background, I'm much more excited to crack these open. Looking at the wave, we have Sylvie from Loki. There's Zombie Captain America. And now that I think about it, that episode has two figures because there's also Zombie Hunter Spidey. Oh, well, now that I'm looking at it, this episode also has two figures, High Snebula and T'Challa Star-Lord. Back here in the dark, fittingly, is Doctor Strange Supreme or Dark Steven. And then I think the one I was excited for most simply because of design, because again, we didn't know anything about these, but there's Captain Carter. And I can already see I have a little paint chip right there or some white bleed or something, but we'll see how that is once I get it out. On the side, pictures, well, okay, that's actually artwork portraying the characters from whatever show they came from or whatever episode, I guess. On the back, is some bios and just showing you everything about the character and other figures in the wave. I'm just noticing all the backgrounds because I, I picked up Chichala and I thought, oh, that's a nice matching purple background, but all the what if figures have purple backgrounds. I think I am going to start with Spider-Man. Pretty nice Spider-Man figure that has a familiarity to it, but altered enough to make you think it's not the same old Spider-Man. It has that cinematic look and feel to it because I think it's kind of based off the homecoming body. The biggie are the legs. They have the same size, the same shape. See the line on the boot running down. It's painted on the homecoming, not on this one. The crotch piece is similar, but check out how that ends with a flat spot. This one comes to a point. The torso's about the same shape, same size, but it's almost like they took all the detail from Homecoming and put new detail on top of it. The costume webs have a different layout, different logos on the chest, different logos on the back, and then no butterfly joints. So essentially all new sculpt up at the top because the arms are bigger. And then you get down here to these cuffs and it's almost Iron Spider-ish. Those are separate pieces, but I haven't been able to pull them out like they're glued on there. And then the head is new. It has that animated style feel from the show. It's definitely Peter Parker though. A little blush to the cheeks, nice eyes, nice lips. This hair sweeping up right here caught me off guard. I looked at it and I thought, very Doctor Strange-ish, but then you get to the other side and it's just parted. I like asymmetry, but it kind of messes with my, oh, it's not even on both sides. Comb your hair, Peter. I dig the colors though, the brighter red, the brighter blue. We're used to seeing this it's not dark, but it's not this light. Because it's that zombie episode, and it, this is zombie hunter Spidey, there are some telltale signs of blood being splattered. It's kind of just soaked into the uniform like it's been there for a while. And then down here, uh, blood-soaked streets maybe? Or he does a lot of kicking. Get away from me, zombie! Have some right here too. I'd like to see just a little bit more. And I understand why they didn't want to go with full-on blood-covered Spider-Man. That's a bad look on the kid's aisle. And just here and there, like a patch or to there. I also just realized these arms are pegless. They're pin visible, which works because outside red, inside blue on the legs, still pins, but it's okay because it's blue on both sides. Paint is a little messy in places. There's silver and black and it kind of, but this is also zombie apocalypse. I'm okay with a little messiness. Going over articulation, there's the hinge at the top of the neck going to a ball in the head. Looks way up, way down. Eh, not bad tilt, swivel. Pin at the shoulder, rotates all the way around. Hinges out, heavy, heavy detents, and the bicep pin for the swivel there. Oh, we skipped ahead. Is a little bit soft, so don't grab by the arm and try to crank. You wanna get as close to the shoulder as possible. Double elbow goes, oh, most of the way. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge in and out. Hinge at the torso goes forward, way back. Rotation at the waist. Ball coming out to the hip comes forward, back, out. <laughs> Come on, Spider-Man. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee, oh, easily. Boop, boop, boop. Hinge at the ankle goes all the way back. Nice forward too. And then front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Peter comes with two thwip hands. Oh, those pop right out. And then there's a 
alternate set of fist hands. But then the head also pops off easily, and there's this masked Spider-Man head. This also looks familiar, but it is not... Well, it's damn close to this, but the size is different. They embiggened it. The webs are very, very similar. That Look how it goes here to this point, and then here to this point. Same thing. I have one little scratch right there. And instead of fixing it, because of the blood spots and stuff, I may make that look like the lens is shattered or something. But then one of the surprises of the episode was Doctor Strange's cape. I don't think we've seen this one before. It, it's kind of plain. It still has a dynamic look to it with the sculpted folds in here. And this coming around to the front, you have the clasps. And then on the back is some nice sculpted detail. But what I think I like most is the way they sculpted it. If you just lay it on the shoulders, it doesn't really affect the center of balance. Because it's so nicely shaped to the back and then the weight is distributed to the front in places. It's not attached, but if you have Spider-Man standing on the shelf, you throw the cape on, it doesn't make a big difference. There you go, unmasked head, cape on, yeah. Next up, let's take a look at T'Challa Star-Lord. For T'Challa, it is a completely new sculpt. They leaned really heavy into the animation look, but it's not like they haven't done that before. If you're building a cartoon-style Marvel Legends shelf, then it continues to grow. But it does throw you when you're used to a certain aesthetic when it comes to Marvel Legends. Very clean overall bagginess at the knees, very clean and smooth. Little sculpted detail here, but again, it, it, it matches the animation style. Have some gold straps in here, coming down over here. Around on the back, it just has the V coming across and a couple of more. I almost feel like these should be gold to match the front. And there's even a couple of drops of gold here on these buttons. Is this the animated style version of the rocket things? A little bit of protection on the top of the foot with some plates of some kind. Toe guard, sole sculpted in with the heel. And then at the top of the boot, it travels onto the knee, which is a little bit jarring. Hmm. Again, no pins. No pins. I almost feel like the hands are reused from somewhere because they have some vein work on them. They're slightly large for the overall body. But look at this head sculpt. It is amazing. It matches what I remember from the show. It's that same style and everything's nicely painted. Well, there is some shiny spots on the hair. I don't know if that's some kind of mold release still on the figure. Oh, <laughs> I, I just wiped it away. Well, kinda. Going over articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. You can also see a tiny bit of movement at the bottom of the neck, but I'm not sure if that's supposed to do that. Looks up, down, so much tilt. Swivel, jacket is a separate piece, but really stiff at the shoulders. Still doesn't get in the way of rotation all the way around. Arm hinges out, nicely integrated bicep swivel. Double elbow, oh, all the way up. Hell, it goes even further. I didn't have the elbow all the way. Rotation hinge in and out. Hinge mid torso. Crunches forward. Arcs back. Swivel at the waist. Ball at the hip. Comes forward. Back. Not so much. Out. Better than the Spider-Man in this wave. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Oh. Stops right there. Just not cut out enough up here on the, the baggy part. And a little loose between the detents. Hinge at the angle goes, whoa, way back. Forward, front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, he's Star-Lord. He's got Star-Lord's blasters, but they are in the purple and gold color scheme that the rest of the figure is in. Oh, okay, you can push and twist. And of course he has two of them, but he doesn't have anywhere to holster them, so it's mostly gonna be in the hands. And then they are reuse of the regular Star-Lord's blasters. The head is removable and there is the Star-Lord mask. Very, very tied to put on, but look at that, completely works. And it looks a lot like the mask we got back with Star-Lord, but there are sculpted differences. And then of course, the hair on top. I love how the lenses are purple. And then of course the gold. Everything just fits so well together. Next up, let's take a look at Sylvie. If the camera would focus. And Sylvie stands out in this wave because she's the only one not in animated style. Some skew further away, some skew closer, but yeah, this is the only live action. Let's remove this to get a better look at the figure. Very Loki-ish, which makes sense, right? I mean, she's a variant Loki, so she's going to have some of those details that call back to his costume. Uh, was this I can't remember which movie he was wearing something like this. This works down to a copperish color, a goldish, or is it the same? I don't know. <laughs> you put it next to black, it looks copperish. You put it next to green, it looks gold. Nice pop on the sides with these sculpted details. Would have liked to have seen this buckle painted. And the belt is a separate piece. There's a black paint here, and I think the green is plastic because you get to here at the sleeve and it turns into that drab greenish color. But then the pants bring the black back, wrinkles coming around, the knees down to the boots. I guess I didn't realize or completely forgot that it's 
just kind of combat boot looking. Fingerless gloves on the hands so the skin tone is painted as opposed to being cast in that skin tone up here. Nice likeness, the photo reel does its job here. The eyes are painted nicely, the eyebrows, the lips. Some wash to the hair brings out the details and then the crown coming around, missing a horn, but again, Loki-ish. Oh, along with the combat boots, you realize that the torso is actually kind of combat vest. Hand does seem kind of big. Articulation, again, dumbbell joint up at the top, looks up, down. Oh, give me that tilt. Swivel, arm rotates, hinges out. Hinge and swivel at the elbow because of thinner arm, but it does come past 90. And then rotates, rotation at the wrist, in and out. Good movement at the ball joint mid torso gives you all kinds of hula hoop. Ball at the hip comes forward, not quite 90. Back, out. Mm -hmm. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee comes up. Oh, beautiful. Loki! Swivel at the boot. Ooh, customizers. There's you some nice boots. Ankle hinges back, forward, front facing pin for rocker. Then for accessories, the hands do pull out. And then there's two grip hands. And that's to hold her dagger sword thing. It's got a nice green glow to the blade. Again, with the gold paint around and, well, some more green. Look at that. There does seem to be some kind of writing. In my brain, I'm thinking, oh, that was in the show, right? It's got some kind of Asgardian language or something. But it may say copyright Hasbro 2021. But fits in the hand nicely. Then there's the cloak I took off at first. It's got a nice just hood look. Comes down almost raincoatish. Just some green paint to show the inside of the hood. Kind of set it off. And it is a softer material. But once you put it on the figure, it becomes a hard candy shell. Looks best like this. And much like Strange's cape with Spider-Man, the way it's sculpted and how it just lays on the shoulders, again, it doesn't affect the center of balance. Guess who forgot to hit record? There is an inner tray for another Doctor Strange cape. Just imagine all kinds of ASMR. Plus the package paper cut me. He really is the darkest strange. But I really, really like this design. This one doesn't lean as hard into the cartoon look, mostly because it reuses parts. I couldn't find my movie Strange, but I have the uh, Astral Projection one. Same lower half with the overlay, same legs, same boots. Different arms though, and then obviously different torso. Even more obvious, different head. The head does skew animated, which we'll get to, but I like how it's a little bit larger. It does something for the proportions for me. I, I just love it. Lots of sculpted detail. I, again, reuse texture to this, the bagginess of the legs, the plainness of the boots, but then come to the arms, and again, some wrinkles, some line work a little bit. These gold bracers does a lot to make them stand out. Oh, and the hands are reused too. That kind of crinkled up. Oh, I'm doing magic. The new torso has kind of that iconic look that we've seen on Strange's torso through most of his career. The purple against the maroon is just pretty. On the back, peg hole but pretty plain because it's going to be covered up here in a minute. But look at that face. Even if you didn't watch the series, even if you were just looking at it like this, you would know, maybe because of the goatee, maybe because of the hair, or just the overall look, it is Dr. Stephen Strange. But if you did watch the episode, you know why his cheeks are sunken in, the darkness around the eyes. He's worn out, but he's on a mission. And maybe it's a theme of the whole series. There was some purple, purple around the eyes, the lips are slightly purple and you can almost see a tint of it in the hair. I forgot to point out the orange popping out right here. For articulation, there is a dumbbell joint, and look how far I'm already cranking it up. That's on top of a ball joint at the bottom. Up, down, <laughs> swivel. This coming out over the arm is part of the hard torso, so when you rotate the arm up, it's gonna swing out a bit. Like Spider-Man, very tight detents at the shoulder, so get as close as possible. Get back down. Swivel at the bicep, double elbow, let's extend it all the way. Oh, all the way up. Rotation at the wrist with the hinge in and out. Ball joint hidden by the belt, get some hula hoop. But because this is laying in front of it, the ball coming out to the hip gets hindered just a bit. Back out is gonna suffer the most. You can get about that far. Swivel at the thigh, you can see up under there. Double knee coming around on the outside of it about right there. Swivel at the boot, hinge at the ankle goes back, forward, forward facing pin. And this may be my favorite accessory so far. There is an alternate right hand with the spell effect attached to it. It's got that spiral graph detail that we see in the movies, but looks very, very nice because he's actually casting it. There's still a hinge there. Actually, if you want to add this to your movie strange, which again, I wish I had, but the hand pops out there too. That does fit there. And then there is the cape and much like strange, 
moving into the dark side, the cake followed right with them. All this gold work on the inside, that is sculpted detail. The shininess of the purple makes it stand out nicely. The gold trim coming down and around. Look at the texture there. That's beautiful. On the back, that same detail poking out the other side, but not painted. It's kind of lost in the black. Unlike Spider-Man and his cape, or well, his Doctor Strange cape, this actually plugs into the back. That also causes it to kind of float above his shoulders. Not a bad effect. Very magic-like. It seems to be a lighter material, which doesn't affect the center of balance as much as I thought it would. How about we open up Nebula next. I absolutely love this Nebula. The body is reuse from the Guardians of the Galaxy movie Nebula from the feet up the legs to the mid torso. On the Heist Nebula, new chest, reused arms I think, it's from somebody, and then obviously new head. Because of the planar cartoon style colors, it makes it a little harder to tell that there's reuse because you have the straps over here painted and the shiny and the new and the pants come down to here. It's just brown for the boots, purple for the suit, and then some other color for the kind of harness look or the seams on the costume. On the back, I kind of wish these were painted like the front just to break it up a bit. The belt piece does float around much like the original Nebula and it has the same style with the bigger pads on the hips but it is a different piece. It's the head, <laughs> well, it's the hair that it makes the biggest difference. She still has that kind of glassy look to the eye, the blackness, and then the blue pops out at the lips and this hair coming down over the eye. It's just awesome. I was gonna look to see if the sculpt or paint was under there, but this is glued down and that is pretty stiff. But I love the wash, it brings out the details, the curl down at the bottom. It's just, <laughs> it's retro but modern at the same time. I also like that there's a little hint of a grin because it, this is happier time. She hasn't had body parts replaced. And it's crazy that it's a movie design with all those extra details, but because of the lack of paint, it is a better representation of what we saw on the show. Going over articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck there, but because of how stiff this hair is and it comes all the way down to the shoulders, it gets in the way. Not a lot of up, some down, hair, 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 hair. Even rotating, the hair gets in the way. You gotta kind of kick forward. Shoulder goes all the way around with a hinge that goes up to there. Hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up slightly past 90 and then rotates. Swivel at the wrist, hinge in and out. Barbell at the mid torso, hindered going forward, goes back a bit, tilt, tilt, rotation. Swivel at the waist too. Ball at the hip comes up, Holster is soft enough, and because it floats, it gets out of the way. Back, ooh, wins the wave. Out, eh, doesn't quite win, but not bad. Swivel at the thigh, double knee, oh, easy. Hinge at the ankle goes way back, way forward. Again, that wins the wave too. Front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, on the right she has the standard just female gesturing hand. And then on the left is a trigger finger hand that is hinged up and down. Both of those do pull out and you can replace the left with a fist and the right with another trigger finger hand, but this one is hinged in and out. You need trigger finger hands to hold this crazy pistol blaster thing. I'm not sure we've seen this before. We may have, but I do not remember it. Because of how weird that trigger guard is, you think it's not gonna fit in there, but not a problem. Looks pretty good shooting from the hip. If you don't want her holding it, it does go in the holster. You get it to here and then there's a snap. It is not falling out. There's cool looking figures, there's good feeling figures, but then there's fun figures. And that's what this zombie Captain America is. The design definitely has some MCU in game flavor to it with the angle down here at the abs and the star being raised off. But the colors are brighter, again, because of animation and it's thinner overall. This is an all new sculpt, <laughs> well, it's obvious in some places. Just look at the ribs poking through, some white bones, some red blood. His uniform did not hold up to whatever hit him here. Well, on top of losing a complete sleeve on this side. This sleeve comes down to the elbow and then there's some sculpted rip detail around there. Glove also got shredded around and then there's a little bit more blood splatter. Same thing up here on the arm. Whatever hit him here, on the opposite side on the back, there's ribs showing through here too. Now the chest harness is a separate piece, but I love that they put some damage on it right here above this because they even went further than that 
And where this strap is still covering, you can still see costume coming across on top of the ribs. That's really thinking about the design whenever this was all sculpted and laid out. So it has some hang down tatters on the back where the costume's been ripped. But it's the legs that really take it above and beyond. You can see through in several places to just bone and meat and muscle. That's on the back too. You, a little light blue to show the flesh underneath the costume. And then below the knee on the right side, he's lost his boot completely. Socks, all of it. But then he's kept his left boot intact. Very nice sculpt work with the straps and just the overall boot look. Paint is a little bit plain, but like I keep saying, if you're playing a drinking game of every time Robo says animation or cartoony, then you're not finishing this review. Then you get up to the head and while it is gruesome, it's a bit scary. It's off-putting. It's also a bit silly, kind of Scooby-Doo-ish, and I like that mix. Good look to the teeth, the inside of the mouth. That is actually an insert, because on top of that, he's opened his mouth so far that he's ripping his cheeks open, and you can see teeth and the inside of the mouth through there, too. Whited out eyes, because zombie. Strap hanging down is rubbery, gets out of the way of any articulation, and then the neck underneath, yeah, there's some decay to it, a little bit more blood. One of the odd things here that makes it <laughs> appropriately awkward is that the left leg is longer than the right. Well, okay, I don't think it's so much that the left leg is longer. I think it's just because it has the boot on, the sole comes down a little further. If you're a vanilla posing type person on the shelf, it's gonna lean to the right, unless you kick it forward just a bit. And again, it gives it that, ooh, that oh so awkward. Going over articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck, gets way up, but not so much down because of how far the mouth is open. It just crashes into the neck. A lot of tilt. Swivel, arm rotates all the way around and then hinges a little past 90. Swivel at the bicep, double elbow. Oh yeah, not a problem. Why does head turn like that? <laughs> Swivel at the wrist, hinges in and out. Dumbbell mid torso works really well for those crazy zombie poses. <sighs> Rotates a little bit, but then there's also rotation at the waist. Ball at the hip comes up, back out, not shabby. Swivel at the thigh, double knee. Oh, can he kick his own undead ass? <laughs> Nothing here but the boot on the left side does swivel. Ankle goes back, front, forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, he comes with this very MCU-ish shield. It has the sculpt work on the inside of the star, the grooves going around, the straps on the back with the bigger one that goes up further on the arm. But notice that there is some blood splatter on here. Again, slightly purplish. Mmm, that must be a theme. <laughs> While zombie Captain America is a fun, fun figure, so is Peggy, but this is more majestic. Is that the word I'm looking for? Kind of iconic while only being a month or two old? I don't know, there's something about this costume that makes me feel like, you know, Union Jack or Captain Britain, but it is also unmistakably Captain America inspired. And before we get to it, yes, it did give her some size. This is from the Peggy Carter Captain America two pack. The serum, much like Steve, gave her height, gave her muscle mass, gave her bigger proportions. Almost about the same as some of the other Captain America figures. But of course, this costume being what it is, this is a completely new sculpt. I have some nice seam lines, and at first I thought the paint was off a bit, but I think it's in the correct place. It's just supposed to look raised on the inside of the red. But you'll notice something wrong, and thank you to Mr. Mixoplick for pointing this out to me, because originally, I was just like, oh, well, that's oddball with that sculpt coming down. And as soon as he pointed it out, I was like, the flag isn't even complete. So, yep, Robo gets a QC issue once again. I've looked at some other reviews on YouTube just really quickly, and it, this doesn't seem to be a common problem. This is unique to me. Or, or well, maybe it's happened to somebody else, but... but <laughs> Yep, that's my luck. It seems I'll be on the lookout for another Captain Carter. A little bit poking out on the other side of the strap coming over the shoulders, which are sculpted on in this case. Glove tops, nice look. They are separate, but like Spider-Man, they seem to be glued on there. That or they are, oh, no, nope, there we go. It was very, very tight. And it takes you a minute to realize that there's some white and red detail on the inside of the forearm. The belt is also a separate piece, but it's sandwiched between the torso and the waist. That way it could just be cast in brown with a little silver on the buckle. A little bit of wrinkles to the pants coming down to the legs where it has these lines playing in an animated series kind of way. Because I'm gonna say it again about the boots. There's smoothness with a strap coming around here, strap here, but it's the face. I mean, 
that's Peggy, at least the way we saw her in What If. Nice hair sculpt, not as detailed as something we'd see on the MCU figures with the heavy grooves, but it's the shape. It's the curls. But I love that they've went to doing photo reel on all faces, not just the MCU. It just makes it so crisp and clean. I think you could put it on the MCU shelf if you wanted to, but you, there's also a noticeable difference. I think I hate these things. <laughs> I, I can't help it. It gets in the way of the ankles that already have a super heavy detent in them. There's some movement, but it seems to always fall back into position. So she has some trouble standing. Or, well, she usually does. Like I pointed out way at the first, there is kind of a little paint slop right there, or, or misstep when it comes to the white line coming across. Oh, well, okay, you can see it doesn't quite meet right there. A little fuzzy right there. Scuffed right there. And I don't know why I love this. It's just a bluish, metallic look that catches your eye. Going over articulation, the hair does come down to the shoulders, so it gets in the way of the... Is that probably a dumbbell joint in there? No up. Some down. <laughs> Swivel, arm rotates around, hinges out, swivel at the bicep, double elbow comes all the way up. Oh, and did I mention no pins? Rotation, hinge, but it seems to be a softer material for this peg. I don't know if it's detents or if it's stuck, but it doesn't want to hinge. Dumbbell in the mid torso gets not bad hula hoop and then some rotation. Ball at the hip comes forward, no back, the sculpt just hits on the back. Out, and it doesn't win the wave, but not bad. Swivel at the thigh, double knee. Oh yeah, not a problem. Then we talked about the angle. Right above that is a swivel side to side. Hinges back, forward, front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Carter comes with her own version of the shield. It's got the Union Jack in the middle. It's a red, white, blue. And then on the back, it has two straps that are the same size. There is quite a size difference between hers and Captain America though. You can take the hand off, to get it in there because the thumb wants to stop you. But if you don't want to take the hand off, one, because the shield is small and it's hard to get back in there, you can turn the hand upside down and push it through both of those. Thankfully, because of the shield, I can pose it like this on the shelf and cover up that missing paint. At least until I get a refund or an exchange or, or buy an extra because this may be a custom of some kind. Unfortunately for the Build-A-Figure, the microphone came unplugged, so I lost the recording of me putting this together. But I will say threading the lower torso up into there and pushing it together can be a pain in the ass. You have to push from here and then down. I had to heat up the head, pop it on. It was not gonna go on with just elbow grease. And that's the same for the shoulders. I could not get them in until I heated them up, but once I did, they kind of want to pop out if you try to rotate all the way around. I don't know if it's the rotation itself or if it's hitting here and jutting out a bit. But at the same time, I can just pop it back in and it stays. Oh, well, while I'm grabbing, I might as well get it out of the way. The skirt piece is a traffic cone. The legs do have a double knee and there's the swivel and the hips and everything, but you will never use them. Here's your range of movement. I understand that's the costume design, but it could have split, maybe? Well, I guess when you lean forward, <laughs> showing a leg and stuff. It's Watcher. It's Uatu. He's going to be doing this most of the time, just standing and uh, watching. One sleeve on the right side, it hangs down. It's got some droop to it. But on the left, it's a bare arm. It does have a cape that's a separate piece. It flows down and around in a softer material. It hangs nicely. There's also this collar piece that plugs into the back. You want to kind of keep that under the cape. It helps hold it on. Although I haven't had a lot of problems with it coming off as I'm moving it around. Nice toe sculpt and everything down at the foot. But it's the face, really. I mean, this big noggin definitely gives off Uatu vibes. It's different from what we're used to in the comics, at least old school. But this design, <laughs> there's no mistaking this. The skin tone does seem kind of orangey at times under different lights. And other times it's kind of tannish. And up close in the camera, you can see the dots, the pixels from where this is printed on. But in person, that's not much of a big deal. I like this chest plate or whatever it is. The paintwork with this horizontal lines that kind of fade in and fade out, it makes it feel aged. And it's the same for this bracer on the left. Well, something I'm now noticing that I didn't the first time I recorded this, there's a different texture on the cape than there is the dress or tunic part and it's also a darker blue. I like that because it gives it a contrast. You can tell the difference. On the back, it's kind of the same blue, 
and it just blends together. Going over articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck, can look up, cape has to be moved out of the way to look down, pondering, watching, so much tilt, swivel. Like I showed, if you go all the way around, that's left and right. You come around here, it pops the arm off. Again, I think it's the cape because once I get it back in there, it holds. Hinges out. On the sleeve side, there is a hinge and swivel at the elbow comes slightly past 90 and then rotates. But on the left side, there is a bicep swivel, double elbow that comes all the way up. Dumbbell top joint at the mid torso, gets you some hula hoop, gets you some rotation. Full leg articulation from the hip to the ankle but you're not gonna be able to do much. Then out of the bottom, you have ankles, hinge back, hinge forward, forward facing pin. The watcher stands at about eight and five eighths to the top of his head and all, well, a little past nine at the top of the collar. Here he is with the Marvel Select watcher. And <laughs> while this is much more my mind's eye version of a Watu, hey, what's going on in here? Can I watch? Wasn't there more than one watcher? It wasn't just a Watu, there were others. So if you wanna make a council or or a group of watchers. Yeah, but that obviously makes the watcher taller than everybody else. That way he can, you know, keep an eye on everything. As far as the rest of the figures go, Peter stands at almost six inches to the top of his hair. Sylvia's about the same, that bun comes slightly higher. T'Challa stands at six and three eighths. Captain Carter, up to the top of her hair, is about the same. Nebula comes in at about six inches even. Zombie Cap is six and a quarter. And then Doctor Strange Supreme is, well, about the same. I always forget that the end game cap is slightly short, but she does look good next to the Falcon and Winter Soldier, Winter Soldier, who also comes back around and looks pretty good with the zombie episode characters. T'Challa and Heist Nebula, if you wanted to, could fit in with the Guardians of the Galaxy display. Same goes for Dark Doctor Strange, if you wanted to put him with your Marvel Legends Mordo, or <laughs> again, here's the astral projection Strange from the movie, I think that would fit too. And then of course, Sylvie and Loki look fantastic together. So at the end of the day, another fine wave of Marvel Legends. If you're into the What If series and you don't mind an animated style, if you do, <laughs> these ain't for you. Basically, if you're into them, you're into them. If you're not, you're not. I think the AOA X-Men wave is hitting and the Armadillo wave seems to be showing up in places. And then there's yet another wave that's on top of all that. So if you can't find something you like between the, the comic book stuff and the Disney Plus stuff, and the MCU stuff, and here and there, then uh, mm, I don't know what to tell you, bud. If you like the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. Another cool thing about this set is the timing. Where the series is right now, we've seen all of these characters, but as we get this wave, they're introducing new characters that we may want in action figure form later. So another what if wave coming, maybe, especially that Ultron. <laughs>